Easter means Jesus has risen from the dead and he can be seen and touched and experienced. I believe that we can do that on this Easter day. Hi, my name is Father Mike Manning. Happy Easter to you. I'm praying that this will be a day in which you will be able to experience God's love in a mighty way. May this day, the memorial of the most important day of our lives as Christians, uh, may it leave a lasting effect of victory over, over the pain and struggle and difficulties that you're experience, experiencing. That's, that's what Easter is about. Entering into our lives when everything seems to be going wrong and knowing that life is there, hope is there, far beyond what we could ever imagine. And may the hope of the resurrection, the movement from death and complete discouragement to victory be yours. Now, I want to, I want to, I want to ask if maybe we could think about this. We've just moved through the the, the pain and the anguish of Holy Week. And that's all involved with the death of Jesus. But the death of Jesus, even on this great day of victory, is good to remember. And not just the death of Jesus, but the death that you and I experience in our everyday life. That, that understanding and that entering into death gives us the strength to be able to then, man, understand what resurrection is about. So for a moment, if you'll grant me even on this Easter day, let's go into the, into the reality of death. And what is that death? Well, it might be the, the death of someone you love very much. And because you love that person, you're deep in deep mourning. It, it's very hard. It, it's hurting you and it's like a, a burden in your heart. And there's almost a death that happens with the death of someone you love. Or maybe it's, maybe it's the experience of illness. You, your life was going along and everything seemed to be going well, boom, and then all of a sudden the doctor comes and tells you, you've got cancer, you've got this illness, you've got something that, that can possibly turn your life in a brand new direction. And, and there's like a death to where I was, but now all of a sudden something new has happened and this is like a, a new death. Or maybe if there's, maybe there's a real struggle with persecution. Maybe there are people in your life that are causing you great, great anguish by their, by their words or even by their actions that are putting you down and making you feel that you're, you know, you're not there. There's actually a, a death that happens. Or, or maybe, and I'm, I'm giving you all these examples of how the death of Jesus is not just something that happened 2,000 years ago, but we can relate to it right now. Maybe there's a broken relationship. Someone that you loved or someone that you wanted to love suddenly is turned from you and there's a loneliness and there's a brokenness of that relationship. And and death is there, and, and it's, it's like entering into the tomb, if you will. Or maybe it's even broken dreams. <laughs> we all have dreams, we all have aspirations, things that if someone had encouraged us and we kind of moved in that direction, oh, that could have been a big, big movement of our life and our talents, and maybe even a changing of the direction of the world. And then all of a sudden, it's broken. and, and it's not understood and it's not respected and it's not encouraged and there's broken dreams. And, and those are experiences of death. This is the, this is the, the one-two punch that we talk about with regard to the resurrection, that brokenness of death. Well, 
aside from those experiences of sickness and persecution, broken relationships and dreams, there's also the death that happens with sin. And, and the sin is a <clears throat> decision we make to move away from God, to, to move away from the direction that we know that God is wanting to move in our lives. We decide, no, I want to do it my own way. And this can oftentimes happen with the, the joy and satisfaction that happens with drugs. Uh, there might be that pain that is related to an illness. There might be the pain that's involved with a broken dream or a broken relationship. Uh, and we take drugs in order to kind of get us through, to, to give us something that takes away the pain. Oh, it's the same thing with drink, isn't it? Yeah. Or we could, we could get so involved with work, we're just, no, oh, we're, we're obsessed with that work, and we're all escaping from that dreaded brokenness, from that dreaded, dreaded mourning that's happening because of that death. Uh -huh. oh, we, we move into laziness, we move into fear. <laughs> the sin might be anger. People can't deal with this anymore because of the way we're going to just <laughs> fly off the handle. Or maybe, maybe the brokenness is with regard to unforgiveness. It's not a word in, in the, uh, I found in the Webster's Dictionary, unforgiveness. It's not a word. But I think you get the importance of my just saying it to you. This is what Easter is all about. Honestly looking and facing the fact, no matter where we are, and I've tried to give a whole bunch of examples of where there's a real death that happens. So the, the celebration of Easter, the celebration of Easter isn't something that happened only 2,000 years ago, but it happened because God wants to say to you and, you and me right now in the midst of our death experience, I've got life, I've got hope, I've got the victory of Jesus dead coming to life that can reach into your life right now, whether it's post-traumatic stress, whether it's a, a broken relationship, whether it's sin that is really overcoming you, God can come and say, let go and let me embrace you. The example of life happening now, resurrection happening, is marvelous in our life. You know? road behind us is broken, the mountains shook in the earth, split open, but we made it this far. The hardest part is to trust again, we barely held on through the hurricane winds, but we Keep your head up, tear the walls down, don't let your life sleep by with your eyes on the ground. We'll never let up, even when he hurts, I'll be there for you through the best and the worst. Keep your head up, keep your head up. We learned how to be broken.
Keep your head up, tear the walls down. Don't let your life slip by with your eyes on the ground. We'll never let up, even when it hurts. I'll be there for you. I hope you're being blessed by this program, but in the midst of my desire to be able to share my love of Jesus and then tell you about what other people are doing, there are serious financial challenges for this ministry. I'm dependent on you to be able to help. Many people think, well, the Pope is sending Father Manning money or the bishops are sending Father Manning money, and it's really not true. You are the one that is enabling this ministry to continue with your prayers, but also with your financial sacrifices. One of the ways that I would invite you to join with us is a thing called the Mighty 800. We are looking for 800 people who would be willing to share each month $25 or more to allow this ministry to continue. Would you please think about joining this mighty 800 and allowing the good news of Christ as you've heard it so many times from here to go even further into the lives of many people. Now, if you are willing to join this mighty 800 and give that donation of $25 or more, I want to send you a gift. And the gift is a book that I've written. It's called 15 Faces of God. This is the, the insights into 15 of the wonderful stories, the parables that Jesus told in his passionate love for his Father. Think about this. Help this ministry to continue. Become a member of the mighty 800. I know, I know that you are going to be changed not only by this book, but changed by the blessings of this ministry. Please, become a member of the Mighty 800. Oh, I'm hoping that you're having a wonderful Easter. And what I've been doing is I've been talking about death. Excuse me for seeming to have kind of a negative attitude towards the joy and victory of, of resurrection. But until we face the death, not just the physical death of lying in the tomb, but the death that somehow just inflects our lives. Until we face that, the power of the resurrection just doesn't happen. Uh, it, it, it doesn't push us over. It doesn't bring us to new hope. And that's what I want to say to you now. Let me give you some examples after we've looked at all those, those deadening experiences of how life starts to come. The life comes with first being willing to face the problem, to face the death. And I know that sounds rather simple, but it's really very profound. Until we face the fact that we are caught up in something that is killing us, <laughs> something that is pulling us back from the growth and the beauty of who we are, until we face that, we're never going to be able to come to this life of the resurrection, to face our problems. Maybe, maybe you're living in a morning that has gone too far. Now, mourning is good. When, whenever we mourn, it shows that we love, and, and Christ is very much in favor of people that mourn. He, in the Beatitudes, we even say, blessed are those that mourn. But maybe there's a time of letting go, and now allowing the blessings that you have to move into the lives of the people around you and to start to use your talents in a new way. Face, face your problem. Another important thing is, when we get into these situations, it's not bad at all to seek counseling. 
to, to try to find someone, uh, and it can be a professional, uh, that's fine, but maybe there's someone that you admire, somebody that you know, that you need to just sit down with and say, listen, could I talk to you for the next 20 minutes or, or even a shorter time? Could I allow myself to expose my pain and my death to you and to hear someone come back, uh, not always with words that are saying, oh yes, yes, that's fine, but maybe with a, with a kick in the pants because that's what we need and challenging us to do something more. Think about that if you would, the importance of making sure that you go to another, whether a professional uh, or whether someone that you know and, and trust can be able to give you the wisdom to start to move in a new way of coming out of the tomb. And, and that's what resurrection is. This is what Easter is, coming out of the tomb, you know, coming out of the death experiences that we have, and all of a sudden standing with a new life. That's what we're about with Easter. We're about facing death and believing that we in Jesus can now start to move with new life. Facing our fears. I, I, I think that this is really important. One of the things that Jesus says repeatedly, as we find in the Gospel, is don't be afraid. And yet deep in our, our lives, there are fears that are overcoming us, that are holding us back. They're like, they're like chains that, that hold us back from who we can be and who we should be. And we face that fear. That's one of the big, big beginnings of overcoming fear, is acknowledging that it's there. Maybe it's confrontation. Maybe it's telling another person, I love you. you know? maybe, it's, maybe it's snakes. Maybe it's altitude. Whatever it is, doing that. And maybe the big fear is using a talent that God has given you. you know? God has given you a talent. And deep in your heart, you know it's there, and you know you got to do this, but uh, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't want to use that talent, because if I do, people are going to laugh. <laughs> I'm going to speak that language. I'm going to play that musical instrument. I'm going to get up and I'm going to start to say something in front of other people and I might even say I love you to someone else and I'm afraid, I'm afraid of that. One of the real ways of experiencing the resurrection of Jesus is giving love to someone else. Isn't it marvelous that when you, when you give time, and when you give attention, and when you give love to another person, there's a there's something that happens in our souls, in our being, that gives us new life. Moving out of, out of me and, and thinking where I am, and, and again, that kind of is, it can be the tomb, isn't it, where we, when I'm just thinking about me and what comfort I can have and where I can go, and I, and I give love to another person. Or, <laughs> here's another, another way of, of, of ex experiencing the resurrection, accepting the love of another person. When another person comes to you and says, I love you, you might just nod or you might say yes, but deep in your heart you're continually battling with that and not letting yourself believe that you can be loved and you can accept that love from another person. I, I find another source of resurrection, another source of moving from that death that I spoke about just, just briefly, recently, the way of coming into that new life is through the sacrament of reconciliation. For us Catholics, it's going to a priest and quietly opening up our hearts and in the presence of God, but in the presence of this minister of the Lord, I say my sins, I, I acknowledge my sinfulness, and then here, hear the words, even though I'm scared to death that they might think ill of me and they, well, I can come up with all kinds of excuses of not wanting to do this. I say my sins and suddenly I hear you're forgiven, you're accepted, and there's even a smile that happens in our life. There's life that comes from that. It's, a, it's, it's, an, it's an opening up of the tomb <laughs> and, and the body can start to come out like it never did before. That's, that's what resurrection means. Death to life. I, I, find, I find another interesting way of experiencing this life 
is an interesting word, and, and you might not agree with me, but, but listen to me, and it's this. It's the word ritual, and I'm thinking of the ritual of the Mass. When we come into something which was highly ritualistic, and meaning that it has certain forms of things that happen, you know, and we, we enter into those rituals by kind of following a line <laughs> along what the, the, the indications of the ritual are. For us, it's Mass coming in, making the sign of the cross, entering, doing, listening to the readings, receiving our Lord in the Eucharist, doing all these things in a ritualistic way. And I, I, I want you to think about this. Rituals aren't bad. You know? Rituals in many ways can be, if we're willing to enter into them, a liberation. Uh, they, they open up something. And it doesn't just have to be mass, you know, it can be other rituals, even rituals of going to a ball game, <laughs> rituals of going to a birthday party, rituals of coming home and doing something that you've done at home on a regular basis, rituals and coming to that. <sighs> I wish I could give the, the full meaning of, of what a, a ritual does to me, although I can touch this. Wouldn't that be great, you know, to, to find in a ritual a way of Easter awakening, uh, a freedom that allows us to be able to touch something uh, in, in a way that we hadn't before. Another beautiful, beautiful expression of life comes with receiving communion, you know, receiving our Lord, a body and blood of Christ. You know. Eat my body, drink my blood. Um, and, and, and it's so beautiful that in the words of consecration, we know that when we do drink that blood, we're partaking of the, the forgiveness that comes with that. Yeah. I, uh, I love the, I love the, 30, the, the 51st Psalm. If you, if you get a chance, pull out your Bible you know, and, and, uh, and pray the 51st Psalm. It's a beautiful way of talking to God and asking for forgiveness. And this psalm is maybe 3,000 years old. I mean, imagine this. For 3,000 years, people have been praying this psalm. But allowing yourself to come and say, Oh God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. Come into my life. Open up the doors of your mercy. Give me the things that I want. And allow us to be able to have a brand new life. Well, have I made any sense to you today? I've, 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 I've talked to you about entering into the reality of death. And if we do that sincerely and with, with openness and, and acknowledgement, whoa, then we can now come to make sure that today, this Easter, is like no other Easter. Because the, the, the death and the life of Jesus become our death to life. You are the one that is enabling this ministry to continue with your prayers, but also with your financial sacrifices. One of the ways that I would invite you to join with us is a thing called the Mighty 800. We are looking for 800 people who would be willing to share each month $25 or more to allow this ministry to continue. Now, if you are willing to join this mighty 800, I want to send you a gift. And the gift is a book that I've written. It's called 15 Faces of God. This is the, the insights into 15 of the wonderful stories, the parables that Jesus told in his passionate love for his Father. Think about this. Help this ministry to continue. Become a member of the Mighty 800. We believe that when we're together, and even if we could, through the beautiful bond of the family that we have here with the television ministry, Jesus is present with us. We are the body of Christ. The resurrected Christ can be experienced in your husband, your wife, even the person that greets you as you walk into the church, or the people with whom you're sitting as you're singing those songs, 
the body of Christ is alive. The resurrected Christ can be experienced in the people with whom we live in the church. But now, let's pray for some of those people. Pray for me. This is for, for Classy. Uh, I have a ruptured disc in my back. And praying here, um, Judith is asking for Tina and Mark's, their marriage, for God to help them to forgive each other. And we've got a thing from Patricia for peace and, and faith and death uh, of, of the death of, of her aunt, uh, Celestine. Okay. Lord, I know that you love me because you went through death to come to life. You care about me. Would you please care about all of these people that have written, all these people that have called? Bring miracles into their life of healing, of hope and peace. And now, may Jesus' love for you always make you smile. Try to pray. Fight will never end. I'll always fall behind. All the things I've gotta do to make it up to you, it's just too much to bear. So I pray. Try.